Hi, I'm Rhett Jesse, and today we're going to talk about the SW5484E compact vibration switch. Now this switch is based on the ST5484E technology. What makes this unique is that it has two relay contacts inside, two solid state contacts. And we're going to demonstrate how those work today. Now those contacts are fully configurable for both level and time duration. And I'll show you how you do that with our free software that you can download from our website. Well, let's begin by just describing this particular unit is an 8-pin unit where we can put a mill style connector on it. And it's IP68 rated. Let me go ahead and show you. I'm going to go ahead and connect this connector to the device. I'm going to go ahead and make the connection. It's firm. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and soak it in this water here for a few minutes while I talk about the other ways you can buy the unit. One way is you can buy it is with flying leads. So this is our explosion proof version. If we take off the explosion proof cap, you can also put on your own elbow and then it would be increased safety. If you need it explosion proof, you have to buy it with the conduit elbow installed. So this can be either five or nine meter cable. And this goes to the same thing with the mill style connector. It's an eight wire or eight conductor cable. And you can see that here, you have eight conductors and two conductors are for the four to 20. Two conductors are for the raw signal, two conductors are for relay for the alert, and then the other two conductors are for the danger relay. So those are the conductors that are included. And they're all different color coded, and you can see in the manual which one goes to which one. We have different versions, and the two basic are the mill style with the eight pin connector, and then you have the flying leads, and you can determine which one you need based on the hazardous area rating. But for increased safety and non-incentive, you can use the eight pin connector, which is what I have here. Let me go ahead and take this out. You saw it was totally soaked. It can easily go three meters in depth or 10 feet without a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on this shaker and we're gonna watch it work. Now, the reason why I soaked it is because, you know, that's a cooling tower. It's a pretty wet environment. And if it can take that, it will do fine. In order to configure it, what you have to do is you have to connect eight wire conductors to a dongle that uses four of those wires. So we use four of the wires that from the eight wire bundle that comes from the device. Either in the, if you use the mill style cable, you're gonna have eight cables, eight wires. And then in the flying lead, you'll also have eight wires. So what we'll do is we'll use four of those wires to connect to this dongle. For the purpose of this demonstration, I have another wire that I'm gonna connect to it. And all this does is just completes the connection from the compact switch to the dongle so I can connect it to the computer. So we're going to look at the configuration that we have now. So I'm plugging it into the dongle. Now I'm going to plug it into my computer and then I'll connect to it. See right now on the display or on the software you can see I'm not connected. I'm going to go ahead and connect to it now and basically that's connecting the four wires from the SW5484E to the dongle and you will see it actually connect and then we'll read the current configuration. So I'm going to change this to metric units because I, uh, I'd like to uh, do it in metric units this time just because uh, we can. Let me go ahead and let's look at the configuration that we have uh, for the relays and everything. Uh, we can see we're in metric units and we can change that to English if we wanted to here but we'll go ahead and keep it in metric. We have for the alert time delay or the alarm one, we have eight millimeters per second peak. And then we're going to, uh, with a three second time delay, and we don't have any latching on. And right now they're normally open. So that means in order to shut these, they have to be energized. So when the, we exceed the alarm condition, the relays will shut. And the way this little box is wired is we'll have the alarm and danger relays come on as appropriate. So we have alarm one, which I'll call alert. And then we have alarm two, which is our danger relay. And it's set at 16 millimeters per second and with a trigger delay of three seconds. And it's also normally open. 
All right, we also have a power up delay, which uh, you won't get any alarms for the first 15 seconds, and that's just after you power it up. Also, if you're using latching alarms, in order to de-latch them, you have to de-energize. So you'll basically cut power to the unit, and then it will reset the relays. Now, if you're still above the vibration condition, the relays will just come back in again. Now, the time delays can be set up to 300 seconds or five minutes. So it depends on your application, how long will it take when you have an alarm condition before the relay will actually change state. So we will uh, go ahead and leave it at three seconds and we're gonna demonstrate how this operates uh, with these parameters. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep these. Uh, I can actually send them and it won't change anything. In order to do that, you have to put in a password. That's a SIL requirement. And you can change this password to whatever you want. And that will allow us to save the configuration and, you know, what we have in there. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and test it. We'll bring the vibration level up to 8, and then we'll see the relay change state. And then we'll bring it up to 16, and we'll see the danger relay go. Since they're unlatching when I go less than those levels, the alarm should clear. Well, with that, I'm going to go ahead and go over to transmitter. So what, we'll go ahead and turn on the HI-903 and we'll go ahead and demonstrate how this works. I set it up to be at 7 millimeters per second and it's at 50 hertz. So remember we set our alarm at 8. So when I go close to 8, I'll stop it right at 7.9. You'll see that it's pretty accurate and it, we won't go into alarm state, 7.95. That's saying, do we dare go that close? But you'll find out that the ST5484E technology is very accurate. There's 7.94, just right on the edge of that alarm, just right below it. Let's go to 7.9, and uh, we'll let the alarm clear, which it does. 7.9. Now I'm going to go to 8.1, and the alarm will come in. So I'm at 8.03 and it already went, so that's very good. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the vibration level up to 15, so we'll go ahead and do that. Our alarm, next alarm set point is at 16. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up to 15, not trying to overshoot it too much. Here's a three second time delay. But let's go ahead and approach it Let's go to 15, 15.2, uh, 15.3, we don't have any alarms. We'll go up to 15.9, so it's very accurate. Uh, of course, it jumps right through it. Yeah. Go back down, 15.8 on the screen, still no uh, relay change state, just ready to, very close. Let's go ahead and go up to 16.2 and just go ahead and go past it. And the relay will kick in. You can see that. As we decrease the relay, uh, as we decrease the vibration level, those relays will clear because they're normally, well, these are normally open, but they're non-latching. So they'll clear when I reduce the vibration amplitude and that's what we want. Danger clears. And then we'll go ahead and go below 0.8 millimeters per second. and that alarm clears. So the difference when we have latching alarms will be that the system would actually have both relays, they would remain energized until you reset the system. And the way to reset this is you have to take power away and then put power back on the unit. So you'd basically kill power to the switch, that would reset the relays, and then it would go back to normal. Now, if you still had alarms that were exceeding the alarm set points and you reset the unit, after the power-up time delay, which we set at 15 seconds, what would happen is the relays then see that you're still at a fault condition and then they would go, they would become energized again. So that's how the switch works. And that's the basics of the SW5484E. Thank you.